Amen. Bless God. Bless God. We are in our midweek Bible study. God bless. I'm Dr. Alicia Williams and welcome to Life in Christ International Church. We are at the very end as we are approaching the very end of the month of August. This is our concluding study for the month of August, which we have deemed as the month of grace. And so tonight, the title of our midweek Bible study is Saving Grace. And I really wanted to um, save this uh, study for the very last um, lesson because I feel like all of uh, uh, the previous studies that, that we shared about um, uh, grace, un, un, unmeasurable, and, and we shared about grace is meaning and, and its essence. And when we come to, to understand that all of that stems and originates and come into full manifestation because of our walk and our relationship with the Lord, it is because of our salvation. It is because of, as we'll learn in our study on tonight, God's sovereign goodness towards us to receive his divine grace, to receive his saving grace. And so tonight I pray that this study and that this lesson will touch you and reach you where you are. And with that being said, let us go ahead and open tonight with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for our midweek Bible study. We thank you, God, for time to come and to glean from your word and to learn and, 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 and develop and grow into all that you've designed and purpose for our lives. Father, we lift up this midweek Bible study to you. We lift up saving grace and the lesson, Lord, that you would be with us, Father, that your divine understanding and the full manifestation, Father, of your saving grace will be made known in our walk, in our relationship with you, in our lives, in every area, every person that we encounter. And all these things we bring before you now, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we know that um, our, our lesson on tonight is going to be about God's saving grace. God's unmerited favor. His, what I call his eye opener, his aha moment. When we come to knowing, when we come to, to, to reaching and, and realizing that we need him. Um, I've heard someone say more than breath itself as our Lord and Savior. And so we are tonight studying and reading um, our scripture reading from the book of Genesis. Tonight we're going to briefly look at the account of scripture that shares with us about Joseph's story. And, and, and this, this is a very familiar account. Uh, of scripture. This is a very, very familiar Bible story. And tonight our study is going to focus on the divine revelation of God's saving grace in the account of this scripture about Joseph and his brothers. And so I pray that the Lord would indeed minister to your hearts tonight divinely about his saving grace, even in this account of Joseph and his brothers. Now, Genesis 45 um, brings us to the place where Joseph is now ruler, a high leadership over Egypt. When we read in the scripture tonight, it's going to tell us that he has been, God has made him as a father unto King Pharaoh. And so um, the position that he holds is the fulfillment of the divine dream that God gave him as a young boy. But we'll come to find that it wasn't about 
Joseph dream. It was about the fulfillment of God's divine will and God's divine purpose for the saving of many lives. We, we are and, and may be familiar with Genesis 50 and 20, which tells us that what the many enemy meant for harm, God turned it around for my good for the saving of many lives. And so when we talk about saving grace from the Old Testament scripture, I thought this would be a befitting account to help us see how God moves in advance on our behalf to make sure that we get it, to make sure that we come into divine purpose. And so with that being said, um, we are going to go ahead and get right into our study on tonight. We already know that that we, we've come to near the end of the month of August. We already know that here at the church, we've deemed the month of August as the month of grace. And, and so tonight, in this last study, in this, this last study on grace, um, and, 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 and coming to the end of this month where we've prayed for Afghanistan and continue to pray, where we've prayed for the earthquake in Haiti and continue to pray, where we've prayed for, for fires and floods and families and hurricanes and, and global pandemics and, and so, so much more. Without a doubt, we've come to recognize that without God's grace, we would be lost. Without God's grace, there's, there's no telling where we would be at or what things would look like for us. And so tonight, even in reading this account of scripture, even in revisiting the biblical story of Joseph and his brothers, it really shares a great, great light on what the commentary calls God's sovereign goodness towards us, his unmerited favor, God's saving grace. So tonight our midweek Bible study takes us, I believe, yet to another aspect of grace. We already know the title of tonight's midweek Bible study is Saving Grace. And, and as we look at, at the account of Joseph and his brothers, and, and as we read and, and glean and, and, and receive as much as we can from God's word, we are encouraged to allow the Lord to, to minister to us tonight through his word about saving grace. And I believe we will see on a grand level God's saving grace in action. And, and, and so um, to, to not to make light of what our study is about, but tonight the Lord will grant us grace and favor to see his saving grace in a tangible, in a tangible way as we look at the account of scripture regarding Joseph and his brothers. And so I'm encouraged that as we prepare to go into God's word and, and as we prepare to allow the Lord to minister through his word on tonight about saving grace, I'm encouraged that we're mindful that God's saving grace comes from the source of his unmerited favor towards us. A grace, the commentary says, that God imparts to those who receive Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. A grace that comes out of the sovereign power of God. And so with, with gleaning that and, and with recognizing that, I want us to be sensitive to God's spirit on tonight. And, and I think oftentimes, because uh, we live as, as if salvation is, is for ourselves and ourselves alone, and, and we live um, as if um, salvation for others is in our hands alone, um, God, I believe tonight is reminding us that his saving grace does not come from man and, and it doesn't come from, from any amount of works or any amount of service or, or title or position, but, but in humility in, in, in reverential fear, we, we recognize that it comes from God and that it comes from God alone. And so, and so as the Lord leads us in his word on tonight, 
I want us to take some time to, to even as we glean from the scripture, but I want us to take some time to look at and, and see the account of God's grace being made manifest in our lives, in, in, in God's divine plan and in God's divine will um, in our lives, in our walk and in our relationship with the Lord. And I wanted to take just a few minutes to add this. Um, as I was uh, preparing for the study and, 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 and the Lord was, was um, providing, a, or as, as I say, opening up um, his word to me, one note um, I, I wanted to reference, one note that came to heart um, as we look at um, God's saving grace as it pertains to the account of Joseph and his brothers is in the New Testament scripture. It's, it's the account of scripture that I believe is, is, is very familiar. And, and it talks about Nicodemus who came to Christ Jesus at night. And, and in this account of scripture, Jesus reminded Nicodemus that man must be born again. And I love and I'm blessed by how the Amplified Translation captures it for us. The Amplified Translation says, man must be spiritually transformed, renewed sanctified in order to see and experience God. And you can read that in John chapter three. And, and so tonight I believe as we experience this account of scripture about saving grace through the biblical story of Joseph and his brothers, we will see, I believe, what happens when a man is spiritually transformed, when, when, when a man has seen and experienced God. All of this, I believe, relates intrinsically to God's saving grace. All of these aspects and, and, and attributes, I believe, stems from God's sovereign goodness towards mankind through his grace, through his unmerited favor, through his unearned and undeserved favor. And so I want us to be encouraged. You know, I, I keep saying it and, and, I, and I want us to, to, to receive and, and, and to understand fully what God has provided for us. And, and, and I want us to prayerfully recognize that there are so many others and so many more generations that we need to pray for so that they too may receive and experience God's saving grace. And so our study tonight is coming from the Old Testament scripture. It's coming out of, as we already know, the book of Genesis. And, and we already know, we, we shared it in, in, in our previous mid, uh, midweek Bible studies, that the book of Genesis is the first book of the Pentateuch. And, and I believe many are influenced by the, the amazing life and, and the amazing story of Joseph and his brothers. I believe many can relate to the the walk, the struggle, the overcoming, the 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 the, the uh, divine favor, the divine will and divine purpose that we see in this account of scripture. And I believe it captures tangible evidence of God's saving grace. And so again, we're encouraged and, and fully uh, we want to embrace what God has provided for us in Scripture regarding the account of God's saving grace. And, and we pick up this amazing account of Scripture at the point where God allows Joseph, we already know, to reconnect with his brothers and his family. After, as a boy, Joseph's brothers left him for dead and then sold him to the Egyptians. After, Joseph was set up by Potiphar's wife and, and he was imprisoned and then imprisoned again. And, and so we, we could arrive and so that he could arrive at destiny, at a place where God's saving grace is made manifest. So this is what our, our, our midweek Bible study is about on tonight. We're reading about it in scripture, but also I believe the Lord is allowing us to glean and to understand the tangible nature, the physical nature of God's saving grace. So again, we're in the Old Testament scriptures in the book of Genesis, the 45th, 45th chapter. And we'll be starting our biblical reading on tonight 
from verse 1 and we're going to um, pause at verse 5. We're going to be finishing our midweek Bible study scripture reading at verse 15. And so tonight our focus is on the divine manifestation of God's saving grace. And as all, always, we know we'll be reading and studying from the Amplified Translation of the Bible. And so just to reiterate, this midweek Bible study is about saving grace. And, and as we look at the account of scripture about Joseph and his brothers, who the scripture allows us to see was used to save himself, his family, and a whole nation of people. Joseph, Joseph was, it was used by God to do that. And, and when we talk about saving grace, we are talking about eternal salvation. Those, and, and, and as the commentary captures it, gifted by God's saving grace to receive him and to receive God's unmerited favor to be saved by what many call his sovereign goodness. Again, we're reading in the book of Genesis, the 45th chapter, starting at verse one. And we're gonna read on down. We'll end our study on tonight at verse 15. And so let us go ahead and get right into the reading of God's word. Genesis chapter 45, verse one reads, then Joseph could not control himself any longer in front of all those who attended him and he could and he called out have everyone leave me so no man stood there when joseph revealed himself to his brothers verse 2 joseph went out loud and the egyptians who had just left him heard it and the house of pharaoh heard it and joseph said to his brothers i am joseph is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless, for they were stunned and dismayed by the fact that they were in Joseph's presence. Verse 4, And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come closer to me. And they approached him. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Verse 5, Now do not be distressed, or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me ahead of you to save life and preserve our family. Tonight, as a reminder, we're talking about God's saving grace. Oftentimes we can't see the hand of God. Oftentimes we can't see what God is working in the background. We, we can't see the whole picture, but God does. And, and everything that he does is perfect. Everything that he's created is good. And so I thank God tonight for this account of scripture. I thank God for the reality of the scripture and, and what it entails, not just about God's divine will and God's divine purpose, but the things that the Lord draws out of us, the, the things that the Lord uses us to accomplish on his behalf. It ain't got nothing at all to do with us, but it has absolutely everything to do with God. And so this passage of scripture tonight reveals, I believe, the essence of God's saving grace. First, it talks about who Joseph is in the land of Egypt and, and, and the great status he holds. It also confirms what God revealed to Joseph many years ago in his dream as a young boy. It addresses what his brothers did when they sold him into Egypt. And, and, and Joseph identifies himself there to his brothers. And, and, and Joseph asks if his father is still alive. And then Joseph affirms and, and, and Joseph confirms the divine, the divine fact that it was all God's will, it was all God's plan. And, and, and as Joseph shares with his brothers, Joseph reminds them that God's plan was to save life and preserve the family. This is so profound tonight because we're talking about saving grace. We're talking about what the commentary calls 
God's sovereign goodness. We not smart enough to make a plan or to take the right steps and the right roads to get to divine purpose and divine will and divine destiny. But but God creates a path and God creates a way. And 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 not to make light of what the Lord is ministering tonight about saving grace, but when things look at its worst, when 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 things appear to to be at 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 the worst it possibly can, God creates his divine purpose from it so that I believe no one at all would ever be able to take credit for who God is and for what God has done. And so I love this story. I love this story because it's it's what I call an arduous account of scripture of Joseph's life and, and has, as he comes into his divine destiny. But all of it was designed to fulfill God's plan and, and God's will and provide tangible evidence of God's saving grace and the fulfillment of, of God's divine dream that he gave Joseph as a young boy. And so tonight, I think it's important for us to understand that without God's saving grace, we would not be enabled to come to him. And, and we would not have what I call the wherewithal to understand or to reach for him, to embrace him and to receive him fully. We would miss God's divine impart, impartation of what the commentary calls his sovereign goodness. And, and so when we look at this account of scripture and how Joseph embraces his brothers who tried to kill him and, and then sold him into Egypt. And, and, and we look at it and understand all that he suffered and the fact that it doesn't leave him bitter, it leaves him to the very center of God's will and purpose for his life. It leads him to the fulfillment of his dream as a young boy which ultimately, as the scripture tells us, saves lives and preserves the family. So tonight as we engage in God's word and, and we revisit this account of scripture as it pertains to God's saving grace, I want us to remain sensitive to God's spirit because it is imperative that we see and have tangible evidence of God's grace, of God's saving grace in our lives in our ministry, in our walk, in our relationship with the Lord, not only on the basis of being saved and, and living saved, but are we intimately familiar with God's saving grace, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others? And, and so let's continue reading tonight as we uh, allow the Lord to, to share with us and show us his saving grace in our scripture reading on tonight. His tangible evidence of his saving grace is in our lives. And, and God does what he does for his divine reasons, for, for his divine plans and will and purpose. Even though sometimes we may not see it. But I believe when it's all said and done, God always wants the victory and, and honor and glory is always due him because his word, as we already know, never fails because God is true and we thank God for that. And we're seeing it um, in its full manifestation in the life, life of Joseph and, 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 and this is just a, a, a witness um, to, to, to who God is and what God does for us. And so that takes us to our next set of verses, Genesis chapter 45. We're continuing on at verse 6. And Genesis 45 verse 6 reads, For the famine has been in the land 
these two years. And there are still five more years in which there will be no plowing and harvesting. Verse 7, God sent me to Egypt ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to keep you alive by a great escape. Verse 8, so now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his household and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 9, hurry and go up to my father and tell him your son Joseph says this to you. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. Wow. When you look at the fullness of, of these verses as it, it, it shares with us and, and, and ministers to us about the fulfillment of God's divine, uh, dream that Joseph has as a young boy, it, it helps us to, to recognize that when, when God does something, it's full. When he does something, it is, it's, it's far reaching. It's not just um, in that partic particular second, but it's transcending, as I, as I always say. It's, it's generational. Even though what's transpiring at that particular moment may not be fully understood, or the fullness of that moment may not be fully manifested, it may take some years to catch up with all that God has designed and purpose to do. Meaning, when Joseph was a young boy and he had that dream, he just knew what God promised. And, and he, he was so um, overwhelmed that he shared it with his brothers and he shared it with his parents. And, and that started um, what I call a... a, a, a a history of events to take place, which ultimately brought him to the center of God's will. But but the richness that I take from this account of scripture tonight is the fact that his positioning with his brothers that meant him harm and tried to kill him and sold him off and his separation from his father um, and his family and his only brother um, from, from his biological mother. That is what I call a perfect example of operating and flowing in God's glory. And, and um, what happens when, when you walk into and, and you live in the fulfillment of God's divine purpose. And so when, when, when I pause to, to glean, I'm, I'm in wow. And, and, and it leads me to say only God can do the things that he does. God told Joseph in a dream as a young boy that he would be great. And as we look at the scripture and the story of Joseph's life, we see that the journey was not easy. But after it all, Joseph comes to his brothers and remind them that it was God. God gets the glory out of it all. God gets the honor. And and even though there's a famine going on, God still gets the honor in a seven-year famine. And, and right now, according to scripture, only two years of that famine has passed. There's still five more years to go. And so, so I believe that it's important for us, and, and I can't emphasize this enough, to, for us to see and recognize who gets the glory out of a seven-year famine. Who gets the glory and honor out of Joseph's life? He is able, in this account of scripture, to tell his brothers and point his brothers to God. The God who has sent Joseph ahead, as the scripture says, to preserve a remnant on earth and keep his family alive by a great escape. Truly, only God can provide that. Truly, only God can do something of that great magnitude. Something that doesn't 
just last for that instance or last for that moment. But we're talking about generation. We're talking about legacy is preserved. And so when we look at this and we understand God's grip, uh, we understand, and, and I pray that this is clear, God's saving grace is predestined. God's saving grace is is on a divine mission with with a divine plan and and a divine purpose to preserve a remnant on earth for God and to keep the family alive by a great escape. And, And so when God imparts, as the commentaries say, his sovereign goodness, when, when God imparts his unmerited favor, his, his saving grace, it comes loaded. It comes loaded with far more than we can imagine at the moment God chooses us to be saved. I'm going to pause at that for a minute because we've got to get it. We have to come into the full revelation of, of what the Lord is ministering tonight about his saving grace. This is what this account of scripture reveals. And, and, and this is what this account of scripture is reminding us that, that God's saving grace is loaded, loaded with a massive, a massive amount of God's sovereign goodness. It's loaded with a massive amount of God's undeserved favor because the narrative is so much more bigger than us. The narrative, ultimately and divinely, is about God. It's about the fulfillment of his plan, his will, and his purpose. So with that being said, let us go ahead. Let's continue on in the reading of God's word. We're still in Genesis, the 45th chapter. Um, We're finishing up tonight um, uh, with uh, verses 9 through 15. In Genesis chapter 45, verse 9 reads, Hurry. And go up to my father and tell him, your son Joseph says this to you. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. Verse 10. You shall live in the land of Goshen, the best pasture land of Egypt. And you shall be close to me, you and your children and your grandchildren, your flocks, and your herds, and all you have. Verse 11, there I will provide for you and sustain you so that you and your household and all that are yours may not become impoverished, for there are still five years of famine to come. Verse 12, look, your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that I am speaking to you personally in your language and not through an interpreter. Verse 13, now you must tell my father of all my splendor and power in Egypt and of everything that you've seen, and you must hurry and bring my father down here. Verse 14, then he embraced his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Verse 15. He kissed all his brothers and wept on them. And afterward, his brothers talked with him. When you read this account of scripture, you see the character and the nature of God interwoven in every declaration, in every interaction, in everything that transpires. What, what I'm saying is you, you see God's character, you see his nature, how he flows and how he operates through the life of Joseph. Not just because, as this scripture says, all his splendor and, and all his power in Egypt. It's about his response after what has transpired. It's, it's about his embrace of his family and of his brothers. It's about the position he takes to make sure that his father comes down. His father, as the scripture says, is provided for and sustained. 
and not just his father, but the scripture says him, his father, and his father's household, and all that his father has, so that they will not become impoverished because of a seven-year famine. His father's children, his father's grandchildren, his father's flocks and herds, all of it. And that's the essence of what the Lord is ministering to us tonight about his saving grace. God doesn't just save for the moment. But his saving is eternal. His saving is generational. His saving is transcending. That's only scratching the surface of all that God's saving grace carries for us. And so when, when we look at this, I, I believe God's saving grace um, allows us to rest our life and, and, and make sure that, you know, we, we have no time for foolery and, and no time for foolishness um, and, 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 and that we come to the place where, where our focus is on what matters most. And that's God's will and God's purpose and God's plan. And I believe Joseph understood God's saving grace. He was able to tell his brothers, as captured in scripture, hurry, bring my father. Let my father know I am in divine position as father to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And, and this is so because God made Joseph Lord over all Egypt so that he could provide and sustain his father's household so that he would not be impoverished because there were still five more years of famine to come, the scripture says. He again reiterates, Joseph again reiterates to his brothers that he is who he says he is and that he speaks their native language. He embraces his baby brother, his brother from his biological mother, and he kisses and weeps with his other brothers and they talk with him only god i believe can paint a picture so thoroughly that that displays his saving grace he saves in this account of scripture a nation of people he saves in this account of scripture joseph and his entire family not because they were good not because they earned it or deserved it no, we recognize that early on um, in, in Joseph's dream as a young boy, God told them that he, what he would do. God did this as a part of his divine plan. God did this as a part of his divine will and purpose. And a full display of his saving grace. And this saving grace still pursues us today. We, we may not be facing a famine. But, but we, we are uh, um, uh, 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 living in the residual effects of a global pandemic. We have seen flooding. We have seen earthquakes and hurricanes and fires and the like. And so I believe this is an amazing account of scripture because it reminds us that God is not a microwave God. He moves well before we are born sometimes to bring us to his divine plan for our existence. And this is what is found in this account of scripture as it pertains to God's saving grace. We were all born with a divine purpose. And it's God's saving grace that preserves. It's his saving grace that keeps us and makes sure and helps us to get to where God has purposed and to get us into the center of God's divine will. And so tonight, I'm encouraged. And, and tonight, I, I really don't, um, I can't say this um, strong enough. I really don't want us to uh, uh, take God's saving grace for granted. And, and what I mean by that is, is um, being encouraged and anointed and empowered to shift to a greater place in, 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 
full manifestation of God's saving grace, what that means in our walk and our relationship with the Lord, what that means in our walk and our relationship with those that the Lord leads our life to touch and to influence. There's a number of things that, that must transpire. We must first be born again. Just as Christ ministered to Nicodemus who came to him at night. We must also live out God's plan for our lives so that we are indeed enabled and enriched and empowered to allow the Lord to use our lives to be a bit a witness to his saving grace. Because as we already know and as we already understand, it's not just about us. Tonight, I, I, I'm praying and I continue to pray that this study blesses you in a rich way and that, that it reaches uh, the depths of your soul and, and, and encourages you to, to take a very good look at God's saving grace in your life and in your ministry and what God has called you to. Because we now know it's not all about us. But it's about him. It's about God's divine will. It's about God's divine plan. It's about God's bigger picture. And so I'm, I'm grateful tonight that we could stop in the midst of all that is going on in the world, in the midst of all that's going on in our lives, to, to glean from God's word about his saving grace as we looked at the account of Joseph. And, and his brothers. This is um, a very rich account of scripture. This is a very rich biblical story. Um, and in it, as I mentioned before, you see the nature of God. You see the character of God demonstrated. And, and it brings out, you know, and, and I already said it, but it brings out the point that in it, it we, we should be encouraged to look at our lives we should be encouraged to say, okay, can I see God's saving grace in my life at work? Can I remember when the Lord gave me a dream about his divine will and divine purpose for my life? Can I see an occasion or situation or circumstance that the Lord brought me through that was designed for me to arrive at destiny? And I'm thankful tonight that the Lord calls us and leads us to take a look, calls us and leads us to, to quiet our spirit and be sensitive to what the Lord is ministering about saving grace. Not just the simple fact that, Lord God, I accept you as Lord and Savior. I recognize um, that you hung blood and died for me so that I might be saved. But what does that mean? What is the rest of of God's story for your life. And that's where you'll find and witness God's saving grace. And so with that being said, as always, I do like to take, uh, before we close, a few minutes to share our announcements. I got a chance to um, fellowship a little bit with the young people today. Um, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we have our Sunday school hour. We are at the close of our summer quarter. So, um, this coming up Sunday will be um, our last Sunday in our current Sunday School resource. Following Sunday, we're going to move into a brand new study, a brand new resource, Sunday School resource. Um, on Friday, September 3rd at 6 p.m., we will have our youth ministry. We'll have our youth Friday. And our end-of-month worship for September will be on Sunday, September 19th. And so with that being said, I pray that you all will govern yourselves accordingly. I pray that the Lord will continue to richly bless you and touch you and reach you in a mighty way for his glory. And I pray that the Lord will continue to lift you up and raise you up and grow you up in maturity to operate and to flow in all that God has divine, designed and purposed. And so with that being said, let us go ahead and close tonight with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, first and foremost, to have the wherewithal, to have the understanding um, for you as Lord and Savior in our life, to, to recognize and, and appreciate and thank you, Lord God, and love you for your saving grace. 
Thank you for saving us. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to look at the account of Scripture that tells us and teaches us about Joseph and, and his brothers as it pertains to your saving grace. And, and in it and through it and by it, recognize that your nature and your character is demonstrated through Joseph lives and, and his embrace of his brother, brothers and, and all that you use his life to accomplish and to fulfill. And Father, we thank you for that now. Father, we ask that you would continue to enrich us and empower us and anoint us and protect us and provide for us and strengthen us and keep us to walk in your divine will. Walk in full manifestation of your divine purpose for our lives, for our hearts, for our minds and our souls. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all that you've purposed. We ask, Lord God, that you would continue to have your way. Father, as we leave, Father, from our midweek Bible study, but never, ever from your presence. Go with us, O oh God. Go before us in all things. And you, O oh God, continue to get the glory. You, Lord God, continue to get the honor and the praise in all things. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. God bless. And we will connect Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Sunday school hour. Thank you.